Hello, and welcome to Western Washington History. Today we will uncover the beginning of the town of Sydney. No, this is not clickbait. I know the title says Port Orchard, and I promise we will discuss the beginnings of Port Orchard as well. It is impossible to discuss the beginning without talking about both towns. Okay, let's get this show on the road. The Suquamish people were once the stewards of this land, and there are still many living in the area. Suquamish meaning place of the clear salt water. They would hunt and fish the area. They had many villages in the area, but the biggest was at Port Madison on Bainbridge Island, at a place they called Old Man's House. The native people had a very deep culture and a sophisticated hierarchy. Their buildings were amazing, as well as the artwork that went on them. Every piece had meaning, a tale of bravery or maybe a remembrance for someone who had passed. Life was mostly peaceful for the Suquamish. Their biggest concern was northern natives coming down from Vancouver Island and taking their people for slaves, as well as looting and robbing their belongings. Captain George Vancouver came from England on the ship Discovery in 1792. He mapped the area for England. He named the bay after his clerk on the ship and called it Orchard Bay. The Hudson Bay Company set up shop in Nisqually and traded with the natives and things were mostly peaceful. Hudson Bay did not want settlers in the area. They knew it would disrupt the peace they had with the locals. In 1846, the treaty between the USA and England was signed and that moved England's land up to the 49th parallel, or where the present-day Canadian border is. With the treaty in place, westward expansion began. The Suquamish were being encroached upon. They never fought the settlers like some tribes did. They worked at getting along with the new people. Their chief at the time, Chief, or Seattle as most people would come to know him, was a great leader. He wanted to protect the few of his people who were left. In one speech, he explained that the great chief didn't have to give them anything and that he was grateful for the lands that the US government was giving them. He also went on to say that his people were once many, now they were few and didn't need such a large nation. It would take the US government years to give the Suquamish what they promised Chief Seattle when he signed the Treaty of Point Elliot in 1855. In one speech the great chief said he just wanted some land to live on and plant potatoes to feed himself. He said he was old and dying and just wanted to see this happen before he dies. He said in that speech it had been four summers since he signed the treaty and his people were starving, they were homeless, no land and no home. When they did get the land promised there were other issues, too lengthy to discuss now, I will cover it in another video soon. After 1855 the United States now had legal control over the Kitsap Peninsula. Kitsap County was part of Jefferson and King County until 1857. First named Slaughter County after a lieutenant who died in 1855 battling the native people. By the next year the people had voted to change the county name to honor Chief Kitsap of the Suquamish tribe. He was a war chief with his name meaning brave. Many small communities were built up around a lumber mill, almost always on the water here in western Washington. Many are no longer here or you would only recognize them as a neighborhood today, such as Harper, Bethel, Annapolis, Long Lake. Sorting these pockets that are now morphed into Port Orchard area will be tricky, so I'm going to stick to the original area, or as I call it, downtown Port Orchard for this video, and then move into other local spots in the next video. There was no name at first, just a few settlers here and there. One was the settler who set up Mitchell Point, but that is out of the area we will cover in this video. One settler who came to Sydney by way of Mitchell's Point, or the neighborhood we know as Annapolis now, was Henry Klein. He had a store at Mitchell's Point, but moved it and his home to Sydney. His place was at Bay and Frederick Street. Post office was in his store. Sydney Stevens and his wife Mary came from DeKalb, Illinois to visit Mary's sister, Mrs. Alex Klein, at Long Lake. While there, he visited the town site at Orchard Bay, not yet named. He envisioned a town. Mr. Stevens was an inventor. He invented a grain dryer as well as a certain type of barbed wire. The barbed wire is debated though, and there is a book written on the subject. Sidney and Mary purchased 88 and a half acres from Robert Campbell for $900. Both Sidney and Mary signed the town plat in 1886. 
It is easy to see where Klein, Sydney, DeKalb, and Frederick Streets all get their name from. At this time, the main industry was lumber, as was the case with most western Washington towns. They made lumber from the large amounts of trees they had, then either died out or found another industry. There were two steam sawmills. Moss and Alex Klein started one sawmill in 1886, about where the Peninsula Feed Store is now on Bay Street. They had the contract to log and clear the town. They used oxen to haul the logs to their mill. There was another mill at the bottom of Grant Street. There were also two shingle mills, one powered by steam and one powered by water from Blackjack Creek. Of course, with the hard work of the lumber industry came many bars and Little Sydney had plenty. A.H. Srofe and Thomas Klein started the Kitsap County Pioneer in 1886. Having the only newspaper in Sydney, they soon became instrumental in bringing the Navy to Orchard Bay. The first recorded church service in Sydney was in 1886. Two years later, this became the Church of Christ. In 1887, Thomas Klein decided to sell his interest in the Pioneer newspaper to his partner, A.H. Srofe. Srofe and Henry Klein went into a fishing business together. They had a smoke shop at the corner of Bay and Sydney Streets also at this time. Sydney got steamer ferry service in 1888, which opened it up with Seattle and other developing towns. 1889 brought learning to the little town when the Central School was opened. Sydney became the first town to be incorporated in Kitsap County in 1890. The town lines were Mitchell Road on the east, Orchard Bay on the north, a block west of Short Street on the west, and South Street on the south end. With Sydney officially a town, they had responsibilities now. They needed streets. Bay Street would flood twice a day when the tide would come in. They needed real help. They had no revenue yet as a small town, so they decided to put a tax on bars and other unnecessary things. With the new tax money, they graded Sydney Hill and used the dirt to fill in Bay Street. The town was divided by Blackjack Creek and Pottery Creek, so a trolley was built to take people over the wetlands from Rockwell Avenue to Blackjack Creek. Eventually, Rockwell Avenue was graded and its sand used to fill the marsh. You can see in this photo where it was filled in. Blackjack Creek was named by Thomas Kendall and Alfred Larson. They named it after their favorite card game of the same name. But it could also be due to the black look of the water. Blackjack Creek enters Orchard Bay at Etta Turner Park. It begins its journey to the sea from up near Glenwood Road. Bethel Road follows it for a long stretch, but as always, Bethel is for another video. Also in 1890, Sydney built a pottery. A pottery was a place that built things with clay and then fired them in large ovens so they could become very hard and durable. A.H. Srofe found that John Melcher was a pottery worker, so he worked at getting financial backing. Once they received the financial backing, they bought fire brick and built a kiln. At the time, the newspaper wrote that there was only one other place in the northwest with clay as good as it was there. They had heated some clay to 2600 degrees and it held up well. This business was located at the bottom of Pottery Hill. They made a lot of sewer pipes for other towns and cities. They also made the first bricks for the streets of Seattle. Fire swept through the town in 1890 and burned the original Sydney Hotel. Prospect Street also lost a few homes. The Navy ship repair facility was dedicated also in 1890. With the promise of work, Sydney was growing. The county seat had been in Port Madison since 1857, but that town was not seeing the growth of Sydney. So in a general election in 1892, Sydney became the county seat. For those who do not know what that means, it means that they got the county courthouse, jail, and all that goes along with that. It created more jobs for Sydney residents. At the end of 1892, the people of Sydney requested that the post office change the name of their town to Port Orchard. The post office refused because what we know now as Charleston was named Port Orchard at that time. Somehow, in the confusion, for 10 years the Port Orchard or Charleston post office was in Sydney. In 1894, fire struck again. All buildings on both sides of Bay Street between Sydney and Frederick were turned to act. In 1896, the pottery, estimated to be worth $75,000, burned beyond repair.
There were many pioneers of that time. In future videos, I will discuss more of them. Among these are the Karchers, C.P. Ainsworth, George Miller, and the Howe family. In an effort to keep this video short, I'm just giving the background to expand on. The Navy, or Sydney Hotel, was part of Port Orchard for many years, seen here in 1900. In 1903, Will Thompson, editor of the Sydney Independent newspaper, succeeded in getting the post office mess fixed and the name of the town changed to Port Orchard. The residents of this town made another good job creating decision in 1908. They pooled their money and bought land that they gave to the state because they'd heard the state was looking for a place to build a retirement home for the state's veterans. Their idea paid off and the veterans home was built just out of Port Orchard. They named it Retzel, which is the backward spelling of the governor of the time, Governor Lister. Also in 1908, Kitsap Bank was opened. The Sydney Hotel was moved down the hill sometime after this photo that was taken in 1910. Blackjack Creek came to the rescue once more in 1911 when the first electric power plant in Port Orchard was built. People had electric lights in their homes and businesses in 1912. Also in 1912, a road was put in from Port Orchard to Bremerton. Harry and Mary Ward owned the first theater called Star Liberty Theater, shown here in 1913. The roads were developing for the automobile. Here is a photo from 1914. Sunnyview Hospital, shown here, was in operation at least until 1940 and was located on Mitchell Hill. The high school would be built next to it as seen in this photo. In the 1920s, the Blackjack Creek water supply was converted to artisan wells for better water. They also had Puget Sound power and light at this point. South Kitsap Union High School was opened in 1922. In 1924, a different movie theater was opened in the building where it is today. It went out of business and was boarded up from 1962 to 1980. It opened again in 1980 as the Plaza Twin Cinema, which was in business until 1996. That is all I have for you for this video. Thank you for joining me today. 